Good morning and welcome. It is 7.30 in the morning. It is the 18th day of October 2021. A cold, foggy morning here in Ventura County, and I am your number one guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, and controversy. The OG GM still waiting to be saved out here in the wasteland. And oh my giddy aunt, what a week. What a week we have had. So much news, so much controversy, so much arguing, so much weirdness. It's weird that a hobby that's basically based upon the idea of a bunch of people with sticks going out to fight monsters in the woods has grown to become something that is so bizarre. And we're going to talk, count down all those bizarre stories, or at least as many of them that fit within the concept of news, weather, sports, and controversy, starting with, of course, the number one story, the Batman trailer. No, actually, that's probably not the number one story. That's still pretty fucking cool, though. The unionization of Pezo. Yes, Pezo, the company that uh, produced Pathfinder, Starfinder, and a couple other things, has unionized. Uh, what does this mean for the gaming industry in general? It's an interesting question because that's something, you know, when you're thinking about game companies, you don't really think about, oh, are they in the union? It's really, I mean, you know, it's probably a thing, but it's just something that never comes up when you, like, think about, like, Fantasy Flight or Evil Hat or whatever, but, or Wizards or Pezo. But apparently the workers at Pezo have unionized. The workers at Pezo's publishers of Pathfinders and Starfinders have formed the United Pezo's Worker Union, UPW. The union speaks to its love for the company but cites a number of underlying issues that have affected Pezo, including underpay, crunch conditions, and the recent allegations regarding the work environment made by former employee Jessica Price. They are also bringing up hiring practices, pay inequity, verbal abuse from management, and the covering up of the harassment allegations. The UPW is asking Pezo to recognize the union. We do not know which union this would fall under. Uh, you can contact the organizing committee. Uh, head by Rachel Allor, if you want to know which union. Um, production, I guess, printing production union, the same union that covers, like, um, books and scripts and stuff, I guess, since what do the workers do? They put things in boxes and they produce stuff. Uh, several of the freelance supporters of Pezo have jumped on the union bandwagon and have decided to support the unionization. Senior De Jason Toronto, senior developer of Pathfinder Starfinder, has indicated that a large number of Pezo's freelancers have stopped work in support of the recently formed union by Pezo employees. Initially, the freelance group had arranged demands, but in light of the new union, they have put forward one single new, 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 new demand. Instead, recognize the union now that's a mixed bag it's great that independent in, um contractors are supporting the peso workers and the, the union or, or not depending upon what your opinion of unions are we're not going to get into that that's not the topic of this vlog but on f that's weird because you know anybody who's not in the union is considered a scab so freelance independent artists who are not part of the peso union if this gets formed and this, if this gets recognized as an actual union under the union board, independent workers could be considered scabs and they could be considered people that you, the union will go, no, you, you can't come here. You can't cross that picket line if we go on strike and we don't want to give our money to you. They could do that. They may not. So it's great that, or not great, depending upon your point of view, that the independent contractors are supporting the uh, main workers over at Pezo to unionize, but could this in the end stab them in the back? Because if there is an actual union, we have seen that unions tend to be very tight and they don't like outside workers taking the union members Monday. You know what an outside worker is? An independent contractor. <laughs> so Pezo freelancers supporting the union, you might actually end up regretting that. In response to the union forming, we have an announcement that came out this morning. Uh, Pathfinder and Starfinder RPG production is frozen, according to senior developer. 
staff at Pezo Publishing, the RPG company behind the sci-fi company Starfinder, and the fantasy that once outsold D&D Pathfinder formed a union. This story was covered on RPG News on Friday, but as of today, Pezo's own senior developer for Pathfinder and Starfinder to, took to Twitter to explain the situation, and the publisher is now in. According to Pezo, they can't currently publish any more RPGs due to the unofficial strike. So whatever was currently in the uh, arsenal for things from Pezo to be released is on indefinite hold until this strike gets resolved. So there is no thing being currently produced by Pezo. That doesn't mean there's not stuff Pezo that's already out that you can't get at your friendly local game store. That's Sess Games and Enemy here in Ventura. But if you're expecting new things or a restock of old things, well, now there's two things working against us. One, of course, is until this strike is resolved, Pezo is not reproducing or reproducing any projects. Second thing is, of course, the shipping apocalypse. Many of the same Pezo products, both old and new, are stuck in the same no man's land that everybody else's stuff is stuck in, in that... If there's orders out for, say, Starfinder Core Book, and your friendly local game store runs out of Starfinder Core Book, that's Cess Games and Anime here in Ventura, Pezo is not going to make any new copies of Starfinder Core Book until the strike is, strike is resolved, and all the existing copies of Starfinder Core Book that were produced are stuck somewhere out there in a boat waiting for this ship apocalypse. That's S H I P, not the other word, apocalypse. To be resolved. Now, there's probably some pre-existing stock in st warehouses somewhere, but if those warehouses are not centrally located, then again, Pezo would have to ship them, which of course they can't because of the ship apocalypse. So, yeah, <sighs> strikes. No one wins, except your union rep. But hopefully, this will all be worked out, and Pezo will get back to being the number. Th two slash three competitor for Wizards of the Coast. On to other role-playing game news. Da, da 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 Fantasy Flight Games has decided that they are going to stop producing Star Wars RPG stuff, but don't worry, because instead their sister production company, Edge, named after Edge of the Empire, will start pr production of the Star Wars RPG stuff. So basically, they folded up its RPG department created a new RPG department that is both connected to and separate from Fantasy Flight Games to continue with the production of Star Wars. So your Star Wars stuff is still going to be produced. The old stuff will have, I guess, the Fantasy Flight Games stamp on it. The new stuff will have the Edge Games stamp on it. Maybe once they, if they do re-releases of the older stuff, they might change the Fantasy Flight stamp to the Edge stamp. But again, of course, that depends upon the whole shipping thing. <laughs> but basically, this is probably a tax thing. Uh, oh, so yeah, Fantasy Flight Games is not making um, Star Wars RPGs anymore. But instead, their sister company, Edge, named after Edge of the Empire, will be making Star Wars RPGs from this point on. Is there anything else going on in the world of role-playing games? Well, this weekend was Free RPG Day, so if you had a chance to head on over to your friendly local game store, that was Games Ogre here in Westlake City, Westlake, um, and see if they were carrying the stuff. There was apparently a lot of great stuff. Sadly, Cess Games and Anime did not do it here in Ventura, but Game Ogre over in Westlake Village did. So, um, and I've already seen some posts, and it looked like there was some awesome stuff. We have a slew of new announcements regarding Dungeons & Dragons, including a lot of third-party stuff. Forgotten Realms creator Ed Greenwood announced that he's working on a source book covering the mageocracy that is Thay, along with designers Alex Kramer and Alan, Kramer and Alex, Alan Patrick. This will be on the DMs Guild, so it is not an official Wizards of the Coast product. It is an Ed Greenwood product being done through DMs Guild. What does this mean for the future of the Forgotten Realms and Ed's relationship with Wizards of the Coast, especially since it looks like Wizards of the Coast is trying to separate itself from the Forgotten Realms and, and become, as it says, system agnostic or a multiverse. 
I don't know. But good for Ed for continuing to support the Forgotten Realms, even if he's doing it through DM's Guild, because, you know, 99% of my D&D life was set in the Forgotten Realms. So, you know, the Forgotten Realms sort of has a good place in my heart. We'll see. Uh, out now from Wizards of the Coast is the Minx and Booze Journal of Villainly, which was part of this year's charity pro- production of for Extra Life. This 158-page book is framed as the Journal of Minx and Boo. Pretty sure that Minx did the writing, not, uh, not. I mean, pretty sure Boo did the writing, not Minx, because if you're not familiar with Minx and Boo, yeah, Boo is definitely the brains of the operation. Uh, Boo, of course, being the miniature giant space hamster of meme fame, and Minx being the lawful good, slightly silly character that has appeared in multiple products including Baldur's Gate. Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes. So this is a official Wizards of the Coast product, even though it was not produced over at Wizards of the Coast, but produced through DM's Guild. Interesting. But since it fe- features Meeks and Boo, it is canon. Whatever that means with Wizards of the Coast. Also, Wizards of the Coast announced the new Critical Role adventure, Call of the Netherdeep, in association with Critical Role. Notice how many times Wizards of the Coast says Critical Role in anything having to do with Call of the Netherdeep. And yet, Call of the Netherdeep was not discussed at the um, Future of D&D uh, roundtable, nor was Call of the Netherdeep discussed at the most recent State of the Row Critical Role roundtable. So neither company has acknowledged the existence of this or even that it was being made. Wizards of the Coast claimed they were done for 2021, and yet, bam, here this is. What does this mean? We speculated about it in a previous vlog, but I'm going to say probably Mercer and company had some sort of like equivalent of a three-picture deal, three-production deal with Wizards of the Coast. So contractually, Mercer and company had to finish this product. Probably it was written and finished a while ago and was just laying in wait until Wizards of the Coast felt it was a good time to release it. This being a good time to release it, especially with all the speculation regarding the future of D&D coming in 2024 and the future of Critical Role. So here's basically Wizards' last chance to milk that Critical Role money since we know... Critical Role Productions is coming out with a revised, expanded Tal'Dori um, world book by Mercer and Company that has nothing to do with Wizards of the Coast. They're producing it themselves. Make of that what you will. Copies of Fizzbin's Cookbook of Dragons. Okay, that's not its real name. Copies of Fizzbin's Treasury of Dragons has made it into the hands of reviewers. If you had a chance to look at it, it hurt my brain. It literally hurt my brain. I tried going through the table of contents and the new way they're doing monsters, and it made no sense. Uh, I mean, I guess it sort of made sense in that it was in reversed. It wasn't alphabetized, but it was alphabetized. It was by challenge rating, but it was in reverse challenge rating, i.e. highest to lowest, except the reverse challenge rating was not alphabetized. So, yeah, it hurt my brain. Uh, apparently there are some builds in the new book that pretty much break Dungeons and Dragons, so look forward to that, DMs. That should be on your shelves this week. In addition from Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons, they announced that G4 will be doing a limited run live play series as part of the network's relaunch schedule starting November 16. G4 will be back in updated versions of the classics like Attack of the Show and X-Play, along with a new series including a program titled Dungeons & Dragons Limited Series. This series will follow four campaigns featuring a mix of G4 talent, veteran D&D players, and celebrities like Kevin Smith. So a lot of people thought this was going to be an animated series, but it's not. It's just filming people playing D&D and putting in a, a G4. Uh, this, of course, will run in direct competition to the forthcoming Vox Machina animated series from Amazon. And speaking of the Vox Machina series coming from Amazon, the first trailer went up over at Comic-Con. We expect the premiere of the show sometime in February. Of course, dates are tentative thanks to COVID. Uh, apparently, the animated show is pretty much following the plot of the Vox Machina playthrough with some 
you know, mild modifications. So think of it as sort of an alternate universe version of the exact same story, but just getting a chance to be retold through the chronicles of animation. Uh, the trailer looks good. Um, it looks like a good, fun anime cartoon, similar to Dragon Prince or Castlevania. Uh, will it have wheels, though, is the question. Obviously, the first two will make bank because of the name recognition. But after that, it's going to be on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime being a $16 a month subscription service as opposed to all the rest of the subscription services, which rarely jump you above $10. Second, it's going to have to compete with everything else on Amazon, including Invincible and The Boys. And third, it's going to have to compete with Netflix's various animated cartoons, including both He-Man's and um, The Hollow and all the other things that are on Netflix. Plus, it's going to have to compete with all the other channels out there that are doing adult animation. So will it be able to maintain its energy once it gets past that initial whoa it's critical role i want to watch this cartoon the cartoon's gonna have to be amazing because of, i mean it's gonna compete with invisible which is just you know great and terrifying so that'll be interesting on to news that doesn't involve dungeons and dragons Whew, let's take a break okay so mana studios mana project studios and don't panic games are have announced that they have officially licensed cowboy bebop to create a Cowboy Bebop role-playing game. Do we really need this? So if you want to play a role-playing game that combines science fiction, spaghetti westerns, Neuer detectives, martial arts action, and uh, amazing jazz-influenced soundtrack, plus, you know, one of the single greatest advertisements for corgis as dogs <laughs> ever, there is now a... Um, Cowboy Bebop role-playing game coming out. Estimated cost. I'm going to say 75 bucks, considering how big it looks. Plus, you know, you have to pay for the art. But hey, Ayn, the data dog. Awesome. So, you know, if nothing else, maybe this, this book will make and convince more people to adopt corgis. Pazio announced a new board game coming to Kickstarter soon. Pathfinder Arena. Icon iconic heroes of Pathfinder have become trapped inside a magical entity known as Arena, pitting them against one another in a bid to escape from a living dungeon. So basically, this is a board game with lots of new figures. Um, think, I guess, Talisman, sort of, or Contest of Champions from Marvels. Uh, the first figure is, appears to be some type of troll, and it looks freaking awesome. So, of course... The re-release of this project will be determinant on what's going on with the Peso strike. So, there you go. Anyways, the Kickstarter of this launches in November, which means we would probably see it in after the new year. It, you know, any chance to get figures on the cheap is good. There we go. Is there anything else going on in the world of role-playing other than Halloween's coming up? Uh, there is a new book out from John Peterson called Game Wizards. This book is one of the many books that's describing the epic battle for the control of Dungeons & Dragons. So if you're interested in a book that talks about the early days of Dungeons & Dragons, what happened to Gary, what happened to Dave, what happened to TSR, uh, from an independent view without any... Um, opinions or stuff just insight into what happened way back then this book is available at your friendly local game store that says games anime so check it out john peterson's the game wizards he is also the author of playing at the world art and arcana and heroes feasts and that appears to be it for all the role-playing game news this week. If any of those stories interest you and you want to go into more depth, let me know and we would follow up on them, including the United Peso workers. So let's close with probably the other most exciting news, and that was DC Fan Fest was over the weekend. We had trailers and premieres for all the forthcoming 2021-2022 projects from DC, mostly from the... Um, animated aspects very little inf we had some information on the comic books but mostly it was talking about the video games and of course the movies and animated cartoons and the number one story about from that 
was the new trailer of Batman. So any doubt anybody had that Robert Peterson of Twilight fame could uh, make us forget Twilight and actually be Bruce Wayne slash the Batman? Yeah, this trailer pretty much ruins anybody thinking he couldn't do it because, oh my, wow. It is an amazing trailer that really shows a gritty, early on, uh, street level Batman, very angry, not, you know, it's Batman year one, more or less, and it looks great. Whether it actually will be great or the trailer is just all the best scenes, who knows. We also had the sneak peeks from the new Shazam movie, sneak peeks from the Black Adam movie. Very excited to finally see Dr. Fate in a DC movie because we know Dr. Fate's been mentioned repeatedly in multiple DC projects, but we have never really had a chance to see him except for on Justice League Unlimited. So finally, we're going to get to see Dr. Fate played in a movie, at least a little bit. And of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing Black Adam. Talk about perfect casting. The only other person I could think of would be playing would be TJ Storm. But yeah, uh, we had the trailer for the new Aquaman, which looks weird, but we definitely have some new looks, including the new Black Manta, which looks great. We had the trailer for Suicide Squad versus the Justice League, which was an animated um, video game that was announced like two years ago, but it's finally seen the light of day, and it looks interesting if you're fans of the Suicide Squad and want to see them get their asses handed to them by Superman. <laughs> This is a video game that's coming out soon. Uh, we also had an announcement there's going to be a Blue Beetle movie. So friends, fans of Blue Beetle, this will be the Jamie Rees Blue Beetle, not the Ted Gord Blue Beetle. I know a lot of people were looking forward to seeing Ted Gord show up in the Arrowverse since Cord Industries has been mentioned since almost day one of the Arrowverse stuff over on CW. But now it's the Jamie Rees um, powered armor alien symbiote Blue Beetle uh but he's getting a movie maybe booster gold will be in it that'd be awesome uh what else oh uh we had stuff from the we had a trailer for the flash which they're doing flashpoint which is an unusual choice because we had you know we've had such a little build up for the flash but it will feature michael keaton as an older batman so if you've been longing to see Michael Keaton, who many consider to be, have been the best Bruce Wayne of the live actions, then here you go. He will be back in the Flash movie. We also had some sneaks of the forthcoming Shazam movie. And if you love the first Shazam movie, which I did, you're probably going to love this one. Um, yeah, uh, plus, but nothing new coming from the Snyderverse section of what's going on with DC. So I guess they are maintaining this instead of doing a collected universe DCU, they're doing independent shows. So yeah, we also have a new Batgirl coming out, but that'll be on HBO Max, which will have a black woman playing Barbara Gordon and will um, apparently feature also Batman, but they won't say which Batman because there's the Michael Keaton Batman there's the Ben Affleck Batman. There's the only Batman that counts, which is the animated Batman voiced by Kevin and the animated Joker voiced by Mark Hamill. So, yeah, we also had images from the next season of Stargirl. So there will be a third season of Stargirl and the next season of Batwoman. So God save us, there will be a new season of Batwoman. There was probably other things announced, but those are the ones that people are talking about, especially the Batman trailer, which is exciting. Woo! Then, of course, we had all the other weird stuff that happened over the week, like the individual going around declaring war against OSR role-playing gamers and claiming that he's going to come save us and some other stuff. But those are all topics of other vlogs. If any of these are something you want to talk about more, let me know. If you never want to hear me talk about any of these ever again, let me know. What is your opinion of Pezo unionizing? What is your opinion of the Batman trailer? What is your opinion of, I don't know, whatever. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me reach 1,000 subs. Remember, if I reach 1,000 subs, I'll never talk about Wizards of the Coast ever again. Yeah, well, we all know that's bullshit. Till next time, I have been your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, and sports that is the OGGM. Have a safe Halloween. I will see you later. Get off my 
land.